Well, you know, I actually wrote this character 10 years ago with part, with the original Asoga. And then with part two, well, La Soga Salvation, there's so much to write about a man with this type of past, a man who was the son of a butcher, was a butcher, uh, lived, he wanted to leave his country to pursue happiness in the United States, been living in the United States for 10 years, uh, not dealing with his past, escaping his past, and now all of a sudden his past is knocking on his door. And I just felt like there's so much to write about that, you know? So it's like uh, he he has all these challenges, even though he wants to change his life, there's so, so much baggage that it's almost impossible to do, right? Exactly. It's a man that is sort of afraid of his past, uh, 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 doesn't want to deal with his demons. So it's a, it's a conflicted character, which is what I love about the development of this character. Um, and, and a man who's really, all he wants in, in, in life is love. And somehow love, does not work in his world. It just can't. Like the, uh, I felt that it was uh, so realistic. It was almost like a documentary. How how close to reality is the story? <laughs> well, the, the, you know, the character uh, La Soga exists or existed in my country. It's actually based on a an event that happened with him and me. He killed a, a friend of mine, and uh, and I started writing about what happened. And then I started researching that this man got paid from the government to kill. Uh, 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 if you if you had what they call in Spanish, if if you had three strikes, you're dead. So I'm like, wow, man, this is interesting. So I started writing about that. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, what if he moved to the United States? And then when he comes to the United States, I basically just me as an artist taking the privilege to give him a story but make it real, make it real to what is Latinos, what is Dominican, what is our culture, what is um, us speaking Spanglish, because it's not even English, it's Spanglish, it's a mix of Spanish and English. So that made it very real to our culture. Why, uh, Manny, why did you decide to write, produce, direct, edit, you did everything, right? <laughs> the camera, camera work. No camera, no camera. No, I'm kidding, I'm edit. kidding. No, no, no. Well, you know what it is? It is. It's just that this happened prior to the pandemic, and um, and it was really low budget, and I couldn't find someone to direct this at this low budget. And the way I write is very visual, so I'm like, well, for me to explain this to someone else, I'd rather do it myself. And since I've been acting for over 30 years, I was like, I think I could handle this. And really, it was one of the best experiences of my life to be behind the camera and in front of the camera at the same time. Crazy. <laughs> what, was it? Uh, I'm sure it was challenging, right? I, I don't know. No, of course. No, it is. It's challenging. But what I did is I prepared myself uh, prior to shooting uh, with the actors. We rehearsed for like a month. And so when we got to the set, we were already uh, fine tuned in what was happening. And then I had time to look at the take before we continue. But I always, I always gave myself two to three takes just to back myself up. And if something went wrong with with the first take or the second, I I do like the fact that in the film uh, nothing is black or white. There's a gray area. We we could all be good people or not that good. And I think that's a good analysis of the human experience. Can you talk a little about that? Yeah, exactly. You know, I feel like we <laughs> all of us we have secrets. All of us have a little thing that we're trying to fight from or our demons that we're dealing with. And I wanted to make sure that all the characters, everyone had those shades. Everyone was sneaky. The only person who was not sneaky was Leah, the love interest, because she's pure. But the beautiful thing about her is that I made her as his conscious. If, if you notice in, in the way I shot it, when, when she's around, the camera doesn't move. It's very steady. But when she's not around, the camera is always moving because he needs his conscious. So that was a decision that I made from the beginning when we started shooting. So uh, Leah is the goodness in Luisito. Exactly. She right. is the only good in the film, what it comes down to. Everybody else is sneaky, dirty, up to something. So I wanted to, her to be the only uh, uh, element that is pure in this world of corruption and darkness and evilness. Where uh, the locations are great, where did you shoot the movie? 
We shot it in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, Central Falls, Pawtucket. Pawtucket happens to be the smallest city in the nation, which is crazy. And those locations were mostly from Pawtucket. Um, um, yeah, so that's, and it was, uh, I think the, the locations play a character within the film as well. It was great. I, I thought it was New York, I swear. I thought it was uh, the Dominican Republic neighborhood, the Dominican, uh, like uh, Washington Heights, in which there, there is a big uh, Dominican community there. Well, you know what's funny? Actually, Providence is the second highest Dominican uh, uh, population in the in, in, in United States. It's Washington Heights, then Providence, then Lawrence, um, Massachusetts. But yeah, it's, it's, so that's why I wanted to sort of make him uh, shoot it there just because of that reason. A lot of Dominicans live there. I love the Dominican Republic. I've been there twice, it's great. Thank you. But you live here, right? I live in Washington Heights. Uh, oh, how, here, cool. yes. how cool, I have friends there too. So uh, why did you decide to, to become, uh, well, an actor, you've been an actor for, but you decided to direct just because you thought, let me do it, there's no budget, I want to tell the story the way I want to tell it. Exactly. And plus I wrote it in a very specific way. And like I explained to you, I didn't want to go through that motion of explaining this to another director or friend of mine or whatever, especially on a low budget. I don't have time for any hiccups. I don't have time to, for any hiccups as in, as while, while we're shooting. So I decided to do it myself because I understood this character. I understood exactly what I wanted to see on the, on the page. So that sort of worked out for me. Uh, one more question. I don't know if we are running out of time, but no, uh, we have time. You have time. No worry, Guy. You uh, good. What about the the cast? It was they. All the guys are very real, very intense. <laughs> They're real. Yeah, they are real, real. <laughs> They're real, real. Those dudes. Those dudes are not actors. Those dudes are not actors. The but they're actors, great. They're great. <laughs> thank you. Those dudes are neighborhood guys from Rhode Island that came in and I'm like, oh man, this guy has an amazing face. This guy has an amazing uh, presence. Let me try to train them and get them in involved in this. For example, the narco guy, he's not an actor. He has an amazing voice, amazing presence. I worked with him for a whole entire month to get him to, for that moment, as the narco, which is, I mean, to me, he steals the movie, you know? Um, um, and the others are not actors as well. Those are just guys from, guys from the neighborhood that I'm like, I'm gonna work with this man to get him where I want him to get. And uh, that's They're, how it worked out. They did a great job. Have they seen the movie already? Uh, some did, some haven't. Some are gonna go see it this coming Friday, the 28th. Why would you like people to take from after the screening, after seeing your film? Well, I, I want them to sort of enjoy an hour and a half of a great film, enjoy a film of a sicario who happens to be Latino, who is now your badass, Ed, 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 uh, uh, badass Hollywood stereotypes that they make of Latinos. He's just a guy who's trying to get by. And I think that's the beauty of this guy. It's just, he's just a regular mojo who's looking for love, can't find it, but he's trying to survive. And any second, any corner, he could get killed, and he's not gonna, he's not gonna have a, 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 a flying cape or, or whatever to save him. <laughs> cool, thank you so much, Manny, and congrats, take care. Thank you so much, take care. Muchas gracias. De nada, placer. Adios.